Hello and welcome to my show. Uh, I am Jana Benun from Israeli News Live and Rise Up Children of God. And I have a special guest today here in Prague. It's a scientist, physicist from Germany uh, by name Harold Kautz Vela. And some of you might have already seen, uh, I had interview with him while um, we had a conference here. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the name of conference was anymore, but it was about two months ago or three months ago, something like that. But we have invited him over to Prague again, and he was willing to come to share some more of his research. Can you tell us, uh, Harold, about your credentials? You are co-author of a, what book? Um, co-authored a book with... Um, with Carlos St. Louis, okay. it was. Yeah, th this is just a working relationship that was connected to geoengineering mm -hmm. and transhumanism. Okay. Um, and you work with a group of scientists, right? On what areas? Yeah, life is strange. I. I started, I, I have a, a, a weird career, I, I studied science, mm -hmm. then I decided out of emotional reasons to become a journalist instead of a scientist. Okay. And then I did journalism for a while and then I ended up in a film company and they wanted to have documentaries. And I, I decided to make a documentary on inventors and this is what brought me back to science but from a different perspective. Okay. And this is kind of what brought me into exceptional research. Mm -hmm. It's not university research, it's not um, uh, military research, it's not company research, it's like, like uh, private researchers that go into areas that are, I like to, I like to call it fringe, mm -hmm. but still, you know, Science is about reality. So if you see something, you know, many people say, I just believe what I see, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's it. I say, yes, I believe what I see, but if I see something, I believe it. And this is what makes the difference. If you see something, there's no way out. You have to deal with it, and if it doesn't fit into the view of the world you're in at that moment, you need to change the view of the world. And this is kind of the type of science I do. Mm -hmm. And I worked quite in a few labs, or for a few labs in Germany, dealing with uh, free energy transmutation, so all these kind of cutting edge technologies that are not yet part of the mainstream. And from there I derived the physics I'm running on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, university normal research is in the 3D realm. Yeah. dealing with a certain field, uh, electromagnetic field. If you really look into the interesting research, you need to, to uh, get a broader picture into a 4D reality, include scalar fields, include uh, higher realms, include multi-layered uh, structures in space-time. Then you can grab all the fringe experience we have, like telepathy, like uh, Whatever, you know. So, so there is a physics designed to grab the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And it is highly scientific. And there's nothing mythological about it. But it gives you the tool to understand what people looked at in the mythological realms. Okay. You know, they had experience, whatever, religious experience, facing demons, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, to understand what this is all about, you can go into the science and from the so science kind of... So science explained the demons. Yes, this is one, one part of the work I've been involved Wow, that's interesting. And you also work a little bit, you touch medicine as well, biology yes, and medicine yes, because... From medicine. Right, because you research autism, right? The, the, the newest one. Yes, okay, well that's wonderful, so I hope we get to talk about everything, but the first subject I want to touch is black goo, and first time I heard of black goo was from you, and I remember last time we had no time to get into everything, so I watched some of your shows that are available out there, so I heard about the black goo, and I know that a lot of people have no idea, never heard a term, never, never heard of such thing, what is... Black goo. What, what is it? 
the easiest way to grab it is like understanding how life is created on a planet. Mm -hmm. This is um, the research is coming from the lab. We, we did all this in the lab just by moving water enriched with carbon dioxide, seeing what happens inside the water. This is kind of uh, transmutation research. Mm -hmm. um, and once you have the results in the lab, it is possible to understand what happens inside the Earth. So now we go all the way how life is created. You have uh, subduction from the oceans where water sediments, water-rich sediments go into the um, lower areas of the, of the planet and this water rises up again. Mm -hmm. It's lighter than stone so it's pressed up and it's enriched with carbon dioxide from all the biological things that are subducted as well. So we have uprising carbon dioxide enriched water and this goes through the stone in a very under high pressure, high temperature and with a lot of vortical motions and you can you can imagine like the stone is opening closing you know for, for all these veins of water up, rising up so you have like venturi uh, um, 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 valves so so you have compression and then it releases which is creating cavitation fields this is exactly the setup we use in the lab for transmutation and in the lab, what we can observe in the lab actually is that the water and the carbon dioxide is getting into very high molecular order with the vortical flows with high speed uh, MHD, it's magnetohydrodynamics, so you have kind of charge separation in the water. And under these conditions, uh, the molecules start to exchange uh, atoms. So what you get is fulvic acid as the first basic um, uh, uh, brick of life mm -hmm. in a way. And this fulvic acid in this vortical motion is uniting to carbon, hydrocarbon chains. Okay. And this is all anorganic in a way. Mm -hmm. Now what we discovered in the lab, which is not so easy to understand, that transmutation doesn't run in the table of elements in the lines, but it, it runs in the rows. We transmute hydrogen to carbon to silica to gold. This is how it goes from the light elements to the heavy elements. Okay. Um, it's just a scientific finding, you know. It's, it's known since the 20s, Victor Schauberger was the first one to discover these lines of transmutation to describe them. And by using his pat patents and geometries and flow patterns, it's easy to reproduce the findings. So we have to deal with this. There's no way around it. This is how it happens. So black goo is a matter found uh, on Earth? Uh, yes, yes. The, the earliest, uh, we can find remains of all the process that kind of is leading to the creation of black goo. So, so if you look, for example, at mumio, mumio is found on the surface of stone in caves in the mountains. And this is kind of the early stage. It is rich in fulvic acids and has already some carbon chains. So this is kind of halfway to black goo. If you run these transmutation lines to the precious metals, then you create something that has all the physical properties to be able to carry a certain form of magnetism. Okay. Yeah, so so you, you create a liquid uh, that has precious monoatomic precious metals embedded in a carbon environment. And this is the basic structure of life. Because so it's alive. It's a matter that is alive. In, in a way, yes. So the, the, the pressure, the monoatomic elements exchange light. They are photon attractors. Mm -hmm. so, and, and these um, photon patterns are partly in an annihilated state. This goes into higher dimensional physics. So we have a 4D realm with this black goo inside, and we have everything that is needed to process consciousness. Yeah. You know, this bidirectional light is consciousness. And it comes out of the anorganic realm at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. 
So what basically is created by upwhirling water is the physical matter with the ability to carry consciousness. It is still a baby in a way with a zero experience. Then we have the black smokers in the ocean mm -hmm. where this liquid comes up and goes into the oceans. Geologists say, say that this is where life is created in the biosphere. So this goes into solution in the water and you have all the precious, the, the monoatomic gold uh, soluted in seawater. You have the basic carbon uh, um, pieces to build up life and this is where life is created. The consciousness carried by the black goo is immortal and holographic. Uh -huh. Once it goes into the biosphere, it gets into rhythms, so we separate single beings and we separate generations. Right. And you can see how like this dissolves into a time-space pattern. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to collect the experience of life. Mm -hmm. The basic physical principle is still the same. We have the exchange of light between the monoatomic elements mm -hmm. and it forms DNA around these elements. This is the basic setup in a being. You have precious metal, monoatomic gold positioned in an antenna system to deal with the bigger distances. In the black goo you don't need the antenna because everything is very dense. Okay. But in biology you, know, you need these DNA antennas or they develop after time. Mm -hmm. And what remains basically is a, a system you can visualize as a mirrored thing or as a secondary uh, computer who mirrors things. All experience collected within the biosphere is mirrored into inner earth where the original substance is up concentrating in the ley lines. So you, you could say the planet has a planetary consciousness carrying all the experience of everything that ever happened in an immortal consciousness. At the same time it is mirroring the consciousness of the life within the biosphere, uh, supporting life with what we call instinct, for example. Instinct is hosted in the ley line system. In so, in that Voigu, you said it's monoatomic elements yes, inside of monoatomic. what is like gold and silver and iridium. Gold, gold, iridium and another one. I because I heard that, like, for example, iridium is part of our brain, like we mm -hmm. need it for brain. Mm -hmm. But uh, we will talk a little bit, I I'm coming back to that black goo, uh, because I saw on one of your show the picture. You, I obviously had a slide with a black goo in some pot mm. and it was like alive almost like waiting to ca yes. get out and, and into your in the face of a person. This is this quantum magnetism uh -huh. uh, that kind of gives the liquid the ability to biomagnetic forces uh -huh. self-organize. So it looked like alive like. It is alive. It is alive. Yeah it is alive. It is conscious and alive and it mm -hmm. can take any form or pattern. It wants to. The consciousness wants to take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so um, it has monoatomic gold. Now, when I go back to a uh, Bible, which a lot, I just recently learned about the fact what was mana, you know, people uh, don't know what mana really was. It was coming down from heaven, and, and uh, this is how God fed Israel, Israelites. And some people say that the manna was monoatomic gold because, you know, Israelites at the time didn't age and they were strong and healthy. And they say it was actually a monoatomic gold. Can you tell us a little bit about monoatomic gold? What, what, some people take it, they call it Ormus, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird subject because you have to be very careful with the qualities. That's important because a lot of people that even, you know, I'm in contact with are telling me that they are taking monoatomic gold for health reasons. Uh, and uh, some people get no results mm -hmm. from it and all, all that. So can you tell us, uh, is there any danger? What are the, t tell us all, all, all you know. First, monoatomic just describes that you have single atoms. Mm -hmm. It does not say anything about the high dimensional quality of the matter itself. If you have the real almost quality, 
then the, the valence electron, so the outer electron shell, is in a physical state of annihilation. The, you have always in, in one orbit two electrons. Take the electron as an electromagnetic wave, which is possible according to quantum physics, and make the two waves in a state that annihilate each other. Then you get with even numbers, atomic wave numbers, you get monoatomic states, and with uneven numbers you need two atoms to get complete annihilation, so you have atom pairs with the uneven numbers. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a superconducting matter that is only half in this reality. You can see this in the lab. If you heat the material, I think from 70 degrees higher, it disappears. It gets transparent and is a, it's just gone, you know, mm -hmm. out of closed uh, thing. So, so this is material, it is matter that is not fully in this realm. This is why it, the Bible says it comes from heaven. Yeah. We always mistake the heaven for the sky. Mm -hmm. It didn't fall from the sky. It materializes out of higher Dimension. dimensional realms in a 4D setup. Yeah. You know, like taking mm -hmm. space-time sheets. Mm -hmm. It came from higher space-time sheets through wormholes into our... Um, and this is how basically the, the, the body functions. We need these elements in the body to be able to pull in the morphogenetic fields. But we don't get it in our field. We, we create the material in the mitochondria. Mitochondria are highly transmutating devices, and they can create every atom, every um, element we need in the body. Mm -hmm. But with this uh, almost with the monoatomic gold in that state, it happens only till age 18. Okay, and then it stops. And then it stops producing, and then slowly we, we lose the material. That's why we age. This is why we age. So we need to put it in our food. And if we take it into our food, mm -hmm. then we can refill the resources and we stop aging. Wow, well, that's amazing. I mean, come on. <laughs> we I, can I stop aging. I, 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 I was tempted, and I personally, I said no. Really? I'm not doing it because there is some sense in aging. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so you prefer we, to age. We, we, we come here with curiosity, mm -hmm. and life is about filling, you know, life into this sink of curiosity. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a limit to that. But you're telling me that if I partake of monoatomic gold, I can stop aging? Because, you know, a lot of people now will be looking where they can get monoatomic gold, especially women, we don't want to age, so... Yes, but why? This is fear of death. Right. It's the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. but, but we can... So if we partake of monoatomic gold, it helps us health-wise, it has a good, a good uh, um, effect on... The immune system and the brain. Yes, yes. Yeah? We, uh, we do use it in medicine mm -hmm. every now and then for regeneration of tissue. Mm -hmm. Especially we, we want, want, once we uh, got intel that there's a weaponized Spanish flu set free in Ukraine, mm -hmm. and we decided to develop something uh, to take away the danger of the weaponized Spanish flu, and this included monoatomic gold wow. in the formula to regenerate damage tissue in the lung. Okay. So, you know, there are good things to do with it. I, I just heard stories about people age 56 going back to 35 in outer appearance. I, I saw pictures of a cat that regrew the tail that was cut off in a car accident. And how about tea? Because you told me about teeth that you yes. know, can regrow. That it works with teeth as well. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I, I have too much respect of the creation. <laughs> to, it must yeah, be. <laughs> to, to mess around with timeline, not, not yeah. timelines in the physical sense, but, mm -hmm. but with, with yeah. the patterns of life. You know, we are included in a rhythm, and this includes getting old. Mm -hmm. And there's so much beauty about it, you know, all the, tr <laughs> the wrinkles. <laughs> they're so beautiful. Get, you know? Yes. <laughs> We cut ourselves off this expression. It's it's a madness mm -hmm. that everybody, you know, like like yeah. Hollywood. Right, everybody, everybody wants to. Like Five till death. No, mm -hmm. this is not life. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, but if we use it for health, it's good for memory. Right? I know it, it re, re, re energizes your brain and memory, so that they can have a good effect, right? But you told me there is a certain way to make it, and then there is a danger if it's not made that yes, way. Yes, this is so. important. Okay. Um, there's a way to filter it out of seawater or water enriched with that sea salt mm -hmm. by magnetic traps. Mm -hmm. This filters out the pure quality because the magnetic trap only interacts with superconducting matter. Okay. Yeah, so 100% pure quality. But a lot of water to move because you, you have to up concentrate, so you take 1000 liter up concentrate all the ormus in one liter and then you need 1000 liter of this quality to again up concentrate so you, you create huge amounts of wastewater okay. to up concentrate the quality. Okay. It takes time, it's an effort but pure quality. Okay. Then there are people who, who, who try to go the alchemistic tradition mm -hmm. uh, to convert um, metal gold, metal state gold, into high-dimensional monoatomic quality. Is it good? Or? And there are ways to do it. A good alchemist is capable of doing it. But if something goes wrong on the way, mm -hmm. you start getting into trouble. Because if you don't get it monoatomic, but like conglomerations of 20 to 40 atoms, this is the dangerous size, mm -hmm you do not manage to convert it into the almost state, then you have colloidal gold in a size that is sucked into the DNA, mm -hmm. because DNA knows I need that material. If it's available, I take it in. Okay. It looks at, oh God, we, we, we get gold, get it in, but the particle is too big to fit into the wiring. Mm -hmm. And then it's sucked in and it breaks it to pieces. So you kill your DNA with wow. clusters of 20 to 40 gold atoms. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, if it's not monoatomic in, in the sense of having annihilated electron shells, it doesn't do anything. Like it does nothing. It does not because do a lot of people yeah. do say that they took Ormos and didn't do anything, you know. So maybe it's a quality that they didn't yes. have. Do you have any company, just for those who are interested, do you have anybody you trust that they do a good job? W w the, the, the parts we bought for our medication uh, development and production is the Blaubeer Wald Institute in Germany. Mm -hmm. They do the alchemistic way and we tested the quality okay. uh, by independent testing methods. And I trust that quality. It's the only one I trust. It doesn't mean that there are not other people who um, who do a good quality. Mm -hmm. uh, this is within the responsibility of every single uh, person who wants to use it, uh, whether filter yourself or trust my judgment about, about Blaubeerwald Institute. It might change from now to tomorrow. You know? Maybe their technician is retiring, they get a new one that doesn't get it done. I don't know, you know. Okay. There's always this danger with the alchemistic way that something goes wrong. With a filtering way, it's always perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we will, I, I, this is something I'm, at the moment I'm looking for funding for this. Mm -hmm. I would like to try to produce it via the transmutation line because we know the vertical patterns exactly on the tenth of thousands of a millimeter. The motion patterns are known, the frequencies are known, the light and the sound is known, everything is known. It should be easy in the lab to uh, produce all the prebiotics like fulvic acid and the oil fragments out of water and carbon dioxide and also go to the higher elements. Mm -hmm. And then it should be easy to produce mana in the lab in the perfect quality. So if you do, we will know about it because we're in contact and um, I'll let the viewers know if we have anything like that. So, okay, very good. So going back to the black goo, uh, you said there is an evil black goo, really bad black goo. Well, tell, tell us about it. <laughs> Yeah, th this is where the story got kind of, um, I don't know, I don't want to say ugly, but interesting for this planet. Mm -hmm. um, we used to be in contact with the earth type, like in the ley lines. This is state of paradise. Okay. 
And at that point, something happened um, that expelled us from paradise. And as far as we could reconstruct this, the history from different sources, you know, this is always a little bit shady and difficult, and you know, sources are sources, not more whether you trust them or not. So, but what, what we made up, pull out as, as history is that at Atlantine times, mm -hmm. uh, there were alien influences on this planet mm -hmm. that kind of introduced a black magic tradition into the Atlantean culture. Then we call them demons, maybe in a Bible people yeah, are... So they, they, were, they were basically... Communicating with etheric beings mm -hmm. uh, that were guiding them into a technological direction. And the aim was to open a stargate, kind of a wormhole close to planet Earth with technological devices. Is it similar to CERN? What they're doing now? Like they're trying to open up dimension of demons? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Wow. It is a similar okay. event. And um, they managed to get the Atlanteans to do this, open a stargate. And this basically messed up the gravitational field of planet Earth and was the reason for the destruction of the Atlantean continent and also of many, many Lemurian islands at that time. So you think that what they're doing now with CERN, we are in a danger of the same thing as Atlanteans were because yes. they're... Yes, wow. yes. Certain things you do not do if you are sane. Right, exactly. And these are they insane. Are insane. They are completely insane. Sorry to say that. No, don't but be they sorry. Need to, they, they are. Need to be they need to be, we need to expose these entities. Um, and I can, I can deliver a few more arguments to that. Sure. So what they imported through the uh, open stargate was uh, a shower of meteorites containing a substance that is very similar to the earth type black goo. Okay. It, it was kind of stored in a kind of oil schist covered with other stones, and these meteorites hit the Earth all over. And this, the, the black goo contained in this alien, I, I will call it alien black goo for okay. the moment, mm -hmm. um, hosted a completely different planetary consciousness. Like we had, we have the memory of planet Earth with all the experience of the biosphere. This is our system, and then there was an alien system intruding our system, okay. delivering a secondary field of planetary consciousness that was not natural in a way. Mm -hmm. It had a completely reduced chakra system. It was reduced to mental abilities, sexuality, and life force. So it was low, kind of uploaded with a three chakra system. At, at the beginning, we didn't know whether this is kind of just a different planetary system, natural but different to ours, like pure reptilian consciousness in a way, mm -hmm. or whether this was intentionally designed in a technological way. Now we know, meanwhile, the answer it is designed. Mm -hmm. It is a technological design quantum computer um, mimicking um, a planetary consciousness. And from the moment that this came down, we have duali duality on the planet because we can decide with our kind of light body, with our biofield, whether we want to connect to the loving Mother Earth, expose ourselves to emotions. Yeah. This is willing to live in a way. Or if we reduce ourselves to the mental and the sexual aspects, skip emotional, mm -hmm. skip suffering, skip life in a way. This is the easy way. And by connecting us to this alien field of consciousness, uh, we basically give in what in the mythology is defined as evil. Okay. Yeah, this is evil. So this is basically a war between good and evil. And when speaking from biblical you know, so because you are speaking from scientific side, our audience is like 90% Christian. So basically, love is the answer. Like Jesus spoke about love, that yes. love is everything. Love is in the heart. You, you, scientifically, you can describe it with angular relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, mental field is binary, sexuality has a 90 degree field structure. So mm -hmm. 
coming light from four direction in rectangular relationship. Mm -hmm. And the heart and all the other chakras are in a 30, 60 okay. degree um, relationship. So what's missing is that heart so, to open so up our heart. This is kind of the aspect that we need to activate out of free will to be able to connect to our planetary system. Okay. If we do not do this, we go the easy way. But the bill you get for the easy way is incredible because this field of consciousness is extremely aggressive. If you want to know what it does with the people, um, it is uh, the, the SS during World War II was a occult organization yeah. and they, they mined this alien black goo and used it as occult pieces of whatever, you know, oh, yeah. like, like uh, making the, the end of knives out of this alien black goo or something really? to put on letters that they don't fly away from the table. You know, just small things integrating into daily life. So they surrounded themselves they with things from that alien black goo. And if, if, you, if you just see with what kind of lack of empathy they yes. crossed Europe, you know what this substance does with you. And when I was for the first time in contact with the substance, the same happened to me. Mm -hmm. I was not prepared to counteract the influence. Mm -hmm. So I was close to killing the hotel manager for stupid little things, you know. I didn't even know what was happening with me. I couldn't, I could not process the anger and rage in me mm -hmm. because I was completely taken over by this field. This is where we started to go into medical, or I started to go into medical development using these substances because I wanted to cure myself from this set of consciousness. I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't know how to go back to my family. But you were uh, in contact with that like goo? Yeah, I, I didn't even look for it. It was just a meeting among scientists and one of them was in research of our history in Germany and he was, he was researching underground facilities of the uh, SS mm -hmm. and he stumbled into a, a pile of these stones and he started to find out what is it so he extracted the oil. Wow. You this is oil they were evil Let's stones. <laughs> So, so weird. It was by, by coincidence. So that's why they were so evil. Because when you watch these movies, you know, and you you watching as as how they could just inhumanely kill, not feel anything for little children, and you wonder, are these human beings? What's going on? So they had this influence of that stone, the black goo. And this goes back all the history of humanity. Like Inquisition, maybe? Mm. Remember Vatican? Uh, yeah. It's more a side story. If, if you look straight back to the beginnings, all the Matra Shalik cults, mm -hmm. in the center of the cult you had earth type black goo as the holy stone. Oh. If, you if you just research black stone and history, you come to the original system that was based on the kind of energies of Mother Earth, she is a female, mm -hmm. with her stone projecting this consciousness into the center of the Matrahyali cult. And this was kind of early time. And then the Patrahyali cult came and all the world religions are basically infected with the alien black goo. Mm -hmm. You have the black stone in the Kaaba in Mecca. Mecca. Okay. Yeah. And they say this is a meteorite. It's a cube. Right. The cube around, no, there's in, in one of the walls, on the corner of a wall, there's a black stone embedded in a oh, silver oh, frame. That's, that's very cool. And this is the meteorite, according to the tradition Mohammed found in the desert. Okay. And I didn't test it myself. I didn't go there to check, you know, if this good or evil, you know. I, so I cannot tell by experience, but mm -hmm. the tradition says it's meteorite stone. So it is alien, so it is reptilian mm -hmm. and so basically it's like like uh, infecting a loving religion re religion with a source of evil uh -huh. and this is a repetitive pattern mm -hmm. I, I don't have proof for this but some people say under the Peters dome is a huge rock of alien black goo mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Every altar in all the churches in Europe carries a black altar stone. Yeah? Wow. The uh, exorcism done by the church, by the Catholic Church, the priests coming for exorcism, they carry alien black goo with them to trigger wow. basically the bioenergetic entities that are connected to this alien consciousness. You know, when you enter, in Europe we have a lot of churches here, and I, I have visited some just to see, you know, what they're about, but um, you go into that building and you feel something big, something unusual, out of this world, but it's not loving. No, it's not. You don't feel love, you feel fear, kind of like, yeah, it's grand, but it's, if you feel, uh, I would describe cold. It's the, fe you know? it's, it's the consciousness field of the alien blue, black goo amplified by the geometry of the building, the exact. And you know what else they have here on the altars? They have uh, skulls, human skulls. I mean, we, we have a lot of churches here. This is the basic pattern. You, you have religions that claim to be loving. Mm -hmm but there's always a, a Trojan horse inside that does exactly the opposite. Especially the church is playing even, you know, they introduce the evil, then they look people becoming sinners, mm -hmm. and then they trade with the guilt they produce themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is evil. Sorry, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, abusing the system of creating, bringing evil into the world and then making the people pay for sinning. Yeah, it's, like, it's so and then they introduce so themselves as mediator, you know, like you have to go through priests. And, mm. and, and you, you even can see the, the, fract, the fracture in history. Jesus brought something loving into the world. The Byzantine Empire was on this original Christianity, built on the original Christianity. Right. And then the Romans that were still under influence of black cults okay. realized we can kill as many Christians we want. You mm -hmm. know? They grow faster than we can kill them. Mm -hmm. So they declared Christianity as state religion, founded the Catholic Roman Church, forced everyone, everybody to become a Christian, Mm -hmm. but still destroyed the Byzantine Empire mm -hmm. because it was you know, on the white side while they were on the black side. And this is uh, you know, what we have today. We have the remains of this fake religion. Right. And all the people with a good intention go there yeah. because they think this is the real McCoy, but it's not. Exactly. Yeah. You need to open up. And it, it makes it difficult because I, I do not feel like judging and you're right, you're right. Because there is still a huge amount of good things in the belief out of the good intention of the people. Mm -hmm. But the institution is poisoned. Right. And, yes. yeah. and so is in many other religions. Like, you know, in Bible it says that uh, the woman has many daughters. It's described as a whore which is Catholic Church and it has many daughters, right? And um, I was myself in one of the cults that on the outside looks beautiful, I mean unconditional love and we love you, we love you, but they suck you in and then you are stuck and brainwashed and they kind of block uh, your vision, you know, and the truth. So yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So anyway, so this is the black ghoul because uh, People hear about me more and more, but some just, it's kind of, it was new to me. I heard you talking about it, but that's kind of very interesting what you had to say. Anything else you want to add to that? Or do you think we should know <laughs> about black goo? Because later on, I want to go into autism and Morgellons, because you were, you, you really dealt with Morgellons and autism, black magic and... Yes, one thing that's not so important for the Black Goose story, because the main thing you experience is this emotional impact. But there is one thing I want to add, because it's important in the other contexts we might talk later or another time. Um, if you look at the writings of H.P. Lovecraft, he describes the black magic cults that are explicitly worshipping these black alien stones. 
and he, th there's one description of um, um, a ritual they make. They sacrifice little children, blood sacrifice, wow. in front of the black stones, and then kind of etheric beings, demons, spider-like, huge spider-like demons are coming out of the 3D projection out of that stone um, to absorb the energy released by the blood sacrifice. Where is this was, I think, in, in one of the Eastern European countries. I think he describes Romania. it in Romania, okay. which has a very long and deep black like, magic tradition. Mm -hmm. um, and this idea, just to grab the idea that actually the stone is projecting the etheric form of bioforms. Mm -hmm. um, for, for, for somebody who is not into the topic, it sounds fringe. Weird. If you if you know that actually this is exactly what a planet does, all our bioforms, you know, the, the light patterns of our biology is a projection of order that is projected out of the earth type black goo. This is how a planet exists. And now if you take a secondary system, then it is logical that this secondary system has the ability to project kind of life forms but they do not have any flesh because they don't they do not come as a whole living planetary system they just come as an isolated quantum computer. So again I would describe it as demons, spirit beings. And in, in the mythological tradition they are described as demons. Mm -hmm. They are basically holographic projects projections out of an alien quantum computer. <laughs> if, if you look at it from the scientific part. Okay. And, and, and what we perceived as being addressed by this quantum computer, this is our perception of black magic, you know, mm -hmm. surfaces, realities, interactions. We communicate with these demons. And either we say, okay, this feels like evil, or we don't want to get in touch. Yeah, but our stay elite clean. Are the but many people, many people decided, wow, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not connected to the heart; they are just connected to the brain. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they start to deal with them. And this is the black magic tradition, dealing with this kind of quantum computing, three chakra consciousness on the planet, and their holographic manifestations. Mm -hmm. And this is going on since the deterioration from paradise. Mm -hmm. And many, many people fell for this and started to worship the system. Mm -hmm. And what you get from them in return is worldly power. Yeah? Okay. So they help you. You worship them. You supply them with your physical energy because they need an energy source. They don't have an en energy source included. This is why this is a um, vampire system in a way. It's, it's sucking energy from our biosphere to survive. So basically, our, these are our government officials, our president. Like let's say, they made a pact with the devil basically. Okay, and they just, they're puppets of these entities and they just have to do things they have to do <coughs> be in exchange for power, money and prestige mm. and all that, right? Is that my correct? Yes. So do you think anybody good can make it to the government today? A lot of people no. think, no. a lot of people think that President Trump is our savior. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the best decisions, the greatest things on earth and he's gonna expose them all and he's the best. You know, he's a multi-millionaire, billionaire, I would say, okay. And he is a president of America. Do you think he sold his soul to the devil and for, for exchange? Or he, can, he, can a good guy make it to such position today? What do you think? I don't want to be offending. But I know, I, I don't mean to, but let's just speak the truth, facts, or whatever I, you think. I don't know to whom he sold his soul. Okay. Whether it's just the mob or the Israeli government, or to the money, or to whatever, but he doesn't look like the soul is still on board. Mm -hmm. Just from his, from his emotional appearance, there's something extremely scary, not, not scary, I don't want people to get scared, but I wouldn't leave my children with that guy. Okay. No, I, I just wouldn't. 
you know? And I don't know what he's up to. I don't even care what he talks because I don't believe he's going to stick to any of his. So you, you don't think any, anything good, any good, good power can get there no, to this, the, to this the position? Is not the one in power. The problem is the concept of power. Because only the being that is about and after power will get into the top position. And this never, ever was somebody who is loving and responsible. Because people who are loving and responsible take care on 3D level. They take care of their family, of their friends, of the normal life. We don't need that kind of hierarchical power. No, the, the, the entire concept of hierarchy is Demonic. black magic demonic and only the ones who fall for black magic come to the top. The entire monetary system is based on scarcity and not on love and abundance and it is black magic. And you also were speaking when we were speaking about what is black magic, the hierarchy of government, a money system. The money system, the uh, way we treat the biosphere in sense of question what do we eat and how do we treat animals. animals. Is this is the, the prolonged development mm. of blood and fire sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we are worshipping basically these dark entities by the way we live. Knowingly or not knowingly. And we're going to get into this in our second yeah. part. Uh, it's, it's how to eat. Like, yes, uh, yes. What, what, this is just. It's all inter interconnected. It's interconnected. Yeah, it's yes, all interconnected. It all, okay, so we can become these beautiful, loving beings right now, right here. Yes. But just changing a few things and think uh, with our heart and become these loving beings. Yes, yes. The, the thing is, before you can change things, the first step is to realize what we lived in the past. And, and the hardest thing is when realizing what we did, I don't want to say wrong, but in service of this alien consciousness and how much suffering we created. The good side in us gets scared from admitting what we did. And we need to be willing to kind of make our inner peace with the past. And once we have this peace with the past, then we can evolve into a better future. But the first step is kind of to realize, oh, there's a lot of guilt I have to integrate and go through and transform it into kind of trans transform darkness. There's nothing as powerful as transform dark darkness. And we need to transform the darkness we lived in the time when we had no clear sight on what is going on. Now we can have the clear sight on what is happening. We can admit, okay, that went wrong. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of harvest the spiritual growth out of this experience. Yeah, and then it's not like about being evil. It is about harvesting the... The, the, the growth out of the experience of having been evil. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. And this is a completely different setup. Mm -hmm. And it's painful. This is the first thing, like confronting yourself with the guilt is one part. And the other part is getting used to feeling again. Because we think feeling is about joy only. Yeah? But if you want to feel, you need to be willing to feel and accept the entire spectrum. And you need to be willing to go into pain because pain is part of life. Mm -hmm. And we need to be willing to go into the pain we created on this planet to heal it. Mm -hmm. And this is a hard step to take. It is extremely... I, when, when I came here, I actually I, I, I had the, the idea of exercising this in front of public, what it means to consciously open up for the pain of this planet. And then just, you know, let, letting the camera observe what it would do in that moment with my body when I open up for the pain. Mm -hmm. And this is what we need to do as a collective. When you start crying, I'm going to tear the, the microphones into pieces if I completely uh, open up.
for what we did to this planet. Mm. You know, in the Bible at the end, uh, in the Revelation, it says, I'm going to destroy those who are destroying the earth. And we are destroying the earth, so we need to wake up collectively as humans on this earth. We have one enemy. We are not enemy to each other. Not Muslim people are not enemy to Jews. Jews are not enemy to Muslim. We, we love each other. We have one common enemy. One common enemy, and that's, you know, the set-up governments, the elites who are in contact with the demons, the Bible called demons, the aliens, the demons that um, they side with them. They allow them to do these things uh, and uh, make experiments on us, I think. So, we will talk in a part two more about uh, more subjects. We're going to come to our food and how we treat our body, about autism, about morgulans, and about some solutions that you want to say to people that how, how are we going by healing ourselves? Okay, so thank you so much for part one and we'll be right back.